Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here today, and today I'm going to be painting this windswept marshland scene. I like to practice my skies several times a week, daily if I get time, and I like to really enjoy just spontaneously trying to get some really loose and fresh transparent watercolour effects on the page as I paint. And I like to use a limited palette when I do my sky practice. So today I've got um, Milford watercolour paper. I'm using the back and it's taped to my board and my board is an angle of 45 degrees. I'm using a large harky brush to wet the page all over but leaving a few little dry patches here and there. I'm starting off with yellow ochre and then sadly I forget to press the camera for the next bit so I've got a still of um, what it looks like. I've added indigo and sepia across the top really thick, sprayed it with a water mister, allowed it to run um, and tipped and tilted the board until it begins to look the way I want it to. Um, so I hope this explains uh, what happened for the bit that I didn't film. Hopefully you can see the yellow ochre, indigo and sepia sort of blended together, wet in wet, and resisted those little light areas, um, which gives me that sort of sparkle in the sky. So now I'll continue the filming. It was at this point, um, tipping and tilting it and then laying the board flat that I switched it back on again. And so hopefully um, that's caught you up with what's happened. Everything is softened and diffused um, and the paint is beginning to spread out really nicely on the page. So then I'm picking up the same colours on the large brush and putting in a bit of a foreground. And I like the way the sky is looking. It's quite looking quite sort of wild and windswept. So I'm going to be really careful not to touch the sky again and just trust that those washes, wet in wet washes, will sort of soften and diffuse and give me some really interesting effects. So as my board is now flat, uh, but the washes and paper is all quite wet and sort of beginning to dry to different degrees, um, you can see that the paint is blooming out in the foreground and, and giving me some nice sort of patterns, some nice sort of potential. This is a sky practice, so I'm just going with the flow, so to speak. Um, I'm using my flat brush just to sort of bring across some horizontal, uh, bring, move the washes around a little and to sort of help them to maintain that sort of directionality. And because my sky is painted, I'm now trying to just set the scene in the foreground and I find it quite satisfying to paint a foreground that goes with the sky. So now again, with the extra large harky brush, I'm um, adding more richer paint into the foreground and up into that area of sort of mid-ground bushes that I have um, decided that that's what that little lump in the, in the middle is. So this is again, the three colors, indigo, sepia, and a little bit of the yellow ochre. Um, and just creating what I'm beginning to see as a sort of a, a marshy uh, wetland landscape. I'm going to add a bit of salt into the foreground and I'm hoping that the little salt patterns will paint the foreground for me. After all this is a sky practice and the sky is pretty much done and so I'm just having a bit of fun now. I'm just trying to bring the painting together to see what I can make of it. The idea of why I do these sky practices so often is because I think the sky is my favourite part to paint of the landscape. It always has been ever since I started painting five years ago. And I suppose I consider myself to be a sky painter because that's the bit that I focus on, the beauty of the sky. But what I'm constantly chasing is trying to get um, a sky that is hardly touched by the paint, where the paint and the water, wet in wet, just produce those beautiful effects all by themselves, whether it's a quiet, serene sky or a wild and stormy, windswept sky. As I say, I want to just try and make sure that there's as fewer brushstrokes showing and that it just looks really simple, 
transparent and clean. And that sounds easy, but it isn't that easy with watercolour. It's a really difficult medium to control. And that's why we practice our skies and things like that so much. Learning to control the water ratios, the water in the brush, the amount of water in the paint, and also the wetness or dryness of the paper. They're all important factors that you can only learn through practice. What I did there was I just added in some... Um, some twigs and branches for those scrubby marshland bushes in the distance by scraping through the paint with the corner of a chopped up plastic store card. And I've just etched in those marks to suggest um, those windswept scrubby bushes. And now this is um, a clean, damp flat brush. And I've just lifted out a little bit of light across the horizon and putting in a few sort of feathery pale marks and that just kind of hopefully cements the illusion of either a distant lake or of the marshland in the mist. I now need to leave it to dry completely and we'll come back and see what we're left with. But if we look closely, you can see that the salt is already working. In fact, it's going a little bit mad in the middle. I think the paper was a little bit too wet, but I can probably soften that back later. But for now, I'm going to step away, make myself a cup of coffee and leave it to dry completely. So I'll be back soon. Right, here it is. Um, it's dried back beautifully. I really like the soft finish of the sky. It's the sort of thing that I was looking for that kind of looks atmospheric and very natural um, without any sort of contrived hard edges or sort of um, lifted out marks or, or even any overworking. So I don't think I really need to do much to it. After all, this is a sky practice. So I'm just going to balance out the composition and add a slightly larger... Um, distorted um, scrubby hawth hawthorn sort of bush, a winter one that's leaning over um, as if it's been um, stunt, had its growth stunted um, by the rugged landscape and the wind that lashes the environment of this sort of rugged marshland. So using a small calligraphy brush or any small brush with a good point, um, I'm just um, putting in this simple lines that suggest um, this sort of um, fairly stylized twisted hawthorn bush or tree. I'm sorry if you can hear some faint banging here. There's um, somebody is um, doing some repair work on one of the buildings outside. I'm making sure that um, I use some dry brush marks that they taper off and I can sort of smudge off any marks or dab back if they're too dark. Um, and I hope you can see that this addition balances out the rest of the marks that were created by the salt, which suggest all kinds of weird and wonderful sort of marsh plants growing around in the foreground. And I'm not really going to do very much else to the painting apart from maybe carry a little bit more of this brushwork with the calligraphy brush um, across the mid-ground hawthorn bushes in the distance and then maybe balance out the ground layer a little bit more with just a few more mid-tones and darks. So just raising up a few branches out of that sort of fairly evenly shaped clump of bushes in the background, just to add a bit of variety and help to link back to this new tree that I've added. And then I can sort of dot and dash in just a few dead leaves here and there, just clinging to the branches. 
this just changes up the texture a bit and I make sure that some of them aren't connected to branches and it just adds to that kind of windswept look and the look of the fine twigs that you can hardly see at the end of these branches as they taper towards the ends. And now just a little bit of adjustment to some of the marks, the horizontal marks on the left, just flattening them out a bit, adding a little bit of extra tone and then blending and softening that back in. Probably doesn't really need that. I'm just sort of beginning to fiddle now. So I think it's probably just about time to call this painting finished. There we are, that's softened back and blended in quite nicely. And then what better to finish off this sky practice but a few birds just wheeling in the wind, flying across the scene. This also works to add a little bit more balance to the composition. The small, dark, easily recognisable shapes of those flying birds um, against the sky uh, just draws the eye and just adds a bit more weight to the left side of the painting um, so that everything isn't all on the right side. Just that small amount of detail, I think, works to pull the painting together. So now I'm going to remove the tape and that will give me the chance to see the painting with fresh eyes. And for a sky practice, I'm really pleased with this. It's fresh, it's spontaneous, the sky isn't overworked. It's a little bit hard edged top right corner. Um, looking at that, I could probably spend some time softening that up. But overall, I'm quite happy with the sky and I'm quite happy with the interesting patterns that I got from the salt. So a quick closer look at the sky and you can see how just these three colours um, yellow ochre, sepia and indigo have combined together using the wet in wet technique and lots of tipping and tilting of the board and a spray with a, a water spray has really given us a, a lovely natural looking atmospheric sky and the salt has given us quite a crazy sort of foreground but I really like it. So thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in more sky practices then please take a look at the sky practice playlist and um, if you enjoyed this then please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Morgana is back with another wonderful um, sky painting, another sky practice on Monday um, so make sure you keep an eye out for that and if you click on the bell icon you will be notified whenever we post um, a new demo. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.